Okay, so uh, today we'll look at how to render an atlas in SUMA. So we'll be generating surfaces for some atlas. You can do this for any atlas or for ROIs that you're drawing. Okay. Um, in your ABIN directory, you should have something like uh, uh, the MNI uh, atlases. Let's see. Well, if I hit the tab key, you'll see a whole bunch of them. Uh, so I'll do this for the macro label. Atlas, uh, so that's just there. Uh, you see there's a head and a brick file. If you have it with nifty data sets, it can work with nifty data sets. If, it, if it's an AFNI data set um, uh, or AFNI format, whether it's nifty, nifty or AFNI format, they can have label tables or atlas points lists, and these will get propagated on into the surface names, so that's useful. But this will work for atlases from any source, as long as they're using integers for their their uh, indices. So the usual case. So let's make a new directory. I'll call it uh, Atlas Serfs, and I'll change to Atlas Serfs. And in that inside Atlas Serfs, I'll do ISO surface dash. Uh, Input, and I'll do tilde slash a bin, m and i, c a e z, and l, 18 plus telerec. And I'll call the output, um, uh, these are, this is like Auxilis Atlas uh, uh, macro label the, uh, based on the N27 data set. So it, it fits that data, so let's, uh, I'll just call it ML and that GII. This will just be a template for the name. It'll be called ML something dot GII. This is in Gifty format. And I will have it use ISO ROIs plus D sets. This will generate colored surfaces for colored surfaces for every region. And uh, I think that's it. Okay, so it takes takes some time to generate this. There, there are a fair number of surfaces in this in this uh, uh, volume. So uh, yeah, we'll let it continue on. The surfaces aren't perfect surfaces. They have errors in their topologies. Uh, but for viewing, this this will be this will be fine. Okay, so it's finished with that. Uh, so now in this directory, I'll just do ls, and you'll see we have a lot of files that call, are called something.giai, and then something.nimble.dset. The nimble.dset has a color inside it and the label that was uh, uh, the same label that's in the, uh, the name of the data set. And Suma knows that as long as there's a matching nimble.dset to load it, and so we can see it on the fly. Okay, so let's start SUMA, and here I will load it with a volume, and that volume, I'll use the corresponding volume from, uh, I think it's, uh, yes, N27 plus Telerac. Okay, and I will load the, oh, I need one other thing dash one state so dash one state says show all the surfaces in one state not one at a time I'll look at all of them at the same time and then I'll just put dash I this is the dash the input uh, for SUMA and I'll do all the gifty data sets and so let's see what that looks like okay a lot of things happening so a lot of surfaces getting loaded and this is how to to render that that surface. So you can see it's this is a, is a bit blocky, uh, which may not be apparent when you're looking at it in a uh, in a in, in AFNI as a 2D viewer, but uh, you can see it pretty readily here. Um, some some things make more or less sense. Uh, the shading here comes from the convexity. I can turn off the convexity by hitting the B key. That's a toggle, so B turns it on and off. And you may be noticing this. This is the uh, the, the uh, volume that I've asked to be rendered. 
Uh, so I can I can click on a piece of that, or I can uh, load up the surface controller and select it as an object. If I do all of the objects, all the surfaces will get their their own uh, menu, and you see it'll go through all of them. And uh, so here I can uh, do things like so here in the image if I change the opacity I can change the opacity for everything by hitting the O key and that just cycles among various opacity levels and that's for all the surfaces if I hit the P key that changes the points mode for all the surfaces so it cycles through that I can go to I can click on any particular uh, region. So here, this is the left post central gyrus. Um, I can do control P on that, and that cycles through those, the points mode for that particular surface. And so then I can start to, to look inside, right? And I can do that for each individual region I can go back to this. Um, let's say I want to uh, to uh, turn off this, or maybe I want. Uh, yeah, I can also have just one slice of this. Turn that back on. So I've got the one slice showing in over here. Um, I can scroll through the slices. With that, uh, maybe more useful to have the opacity turned down. Uh, so, if I hit the shift scroll wheel, I can scroll through the selected slice direction and uh, see the slices like that. I can also do uh, volume rendering, and I may want to turn off these slices. And uh, you can see that it's there. Um, so the I can change the transparency of, of just one one object. I can have this to be more transparent, or let's make it in between. And um, and I can change the transparencies also for any individual region. Um, so here, transparencies. So that's for looking at lots of regions. If you if you want to uh, to find if you have an image that you, you like the way it looks, then what you can do is you can um, uh, you can also you can turn off the various uh, little uh, marks on it with the F3, F4, F5. And F5 turns off the uh, the frame. You can change the background color with the F6 key. Um, F1 puts this kind of uh, bar through the the axes. And then you can have F2 to give you these outside grids. So uh, this is this is a useful way to to look at regions. You can have just one of the regions on the, the command line. I could just um, do Control Z VG put that in the background. Uh, so if I just wanted to see you know, just this one, for instance, I could just uh, call sumo uh, with that. And so I can see what that region looks like. So that's that region by itself. And I can select any, any set of regions, of course. 
All right, so uh, that's uh, a kind of quick quick way to look at uh, volumes, uh, atlas volumes in SUMA as a set of surfaces.